Hello, my name is Isabel Bird and I will be teaching you today about how to fake it till you make it. Um, so you're a beginner delegate and you show up to a conference and you see all these people in suits and they're talking and they're arguing and you can't understand a word they're saying. Um, you know, policies and clashes and sanctions and I don't know, you're lost. You don't know where to start. But here's the thing. Every one of them, the people who win best delegates, the people you're scared of, every single one of them either is or had to fake it till they made it. I've faked it, um, everyone has, even the chairs to some extent will have to fake it because the only way you gain experience is by doing it and if you're too scared to do it then um, you're in a bit of a catch-22. So you have to fake it to start doing things and that's how you gain experience to um, to start being a good delegate and start getting awards. So you can't wait until you're sure of what you're doing because you'll never be completely sure of what you're doing. So you've got to jump in there and start no matter how scared you are. You've got to take the leap of faith and trust yourself to do the right thing because, you know, chances are most of the people in the room are going to be doing the same thing. Um, so everyone, I, everyone I've talked to has told me the same thing. I had a mentor when I started MUN four years ago and I admired him. He was amazing. He was the ultimate MUNer. I mean, he was a genius, really. Um, and yet years later, he told me that at the time he had no clue what he was doing. Um, he felt like an imposter, he felt like he wasn't supposed to be there. Um, an imposter, sy imposter syndrome is real. I have it a lot myself. But when you fake it, you won't just make it, you'll, you'll start becoming who you're trying to be. Um, so don't worry if you feel like you're not supposed to be there, um, if everyone else um, feels like they know what they're doing and you're the only one stuck there um, looking around, everyone feels like that. And it goes to show that you know more than you give yourself credit for. Um, you can trust yourself to do well if you don't let yourself get intimidated enough to, to give up. So I'm going to talk about how you can fake it in lobbying and coalition management and then, I, and then about how you can fake it um, with speeches and questions. And the reason I'm going to be talking about lobbying and coalition management first is that included in that is body language and posture. And that matters all the time from the second you get to the venue of the conference. And there are different aspects to faking it while lobbying. You can mimic the people you admire, you can dress the part, you should, you should adopt the right posture and body language, and all of this will help you fake confidence, which in turn will let you become more confident and show those around you that you are a delegate to look out for. So as soon as you get to the conference, you'll start meeting delegates from your committee. First impressions are a real thing. Um, and if you want people to perceive you as a strong player, if you want to show your chairs that you're a strong delegate, you need to play the part. You might be a socially anxious person real, in real life, but remember that in the conference you are not you. You're a country. You're China or the United States or Germany. And Germany isn't shy, is it? Germany's the strongest country in Europe. So remember that you are not you. You're a country, so act like it. Well, technically you're a delegate of a country, but a delegate of a country is not shy. So remember that. Nothing from your real life applies in the conference in terms of social rules. You can go in with your best friends, you can fight with them as countries, and you can come out the other side stronger friends. So don't bring in your real life anxiety. Remember that in a conference you can do whatever you want. Um, for example, in real life, people have told me um, that I probably lack charisma or I won't be able to do public speaking. And I mean, they're right. In real life, I am terrible at things like that. 
but you know the awards say differently and that's because in a conference I'm Mexico or I'm Switzerland and that's a completely different state of mind. So if you're an anxious person in real life and you're finding it hard to switch, you're finding it hard to become um, a more confident person in a conference, what do you do? How do you start making connections? How do you start influencing decisions? Well, the first thing is posture. It's a really simple thing and it's really important. You adopt confident body language. So what does that mean? You sit up straight, you have your head high, you hold your arms out, you make big gestures with your hands when you're talking. You don't cross your arms like that. Um, Because people will see that and it subconsciously they'll think, well, they're shy, they're not someone who's going to help me, I'm not going to talk to them, I'm not going to think very highly of them if they talk to me. But if you're, if you're loud with your actions, with your posture, with your body language, they're going to take note of that, and it does make an, a huge difference. And especially if you're a person who is short or you're quiet, um, studies have shown that like, if, if you're standing there and you're you have more open gestures, it is an expression of power and dominance, and it, it's scientifically proven to yield results. It's going to work if you can't use things like your height or your voice. Um, and there's also a thing where if you're talking to someone, and if you are shy, the other person is going to pick up on that, and they're going to become more loud and more boisterous. Um, so we do the opposite of what the person who's talking to us is doing. So that if your body language indicates that you're in control and that you know what you're doing, then the person you're talking to is going to understand that. They're going to feel less in control and you'll be able to see that in in their body language. Um, and it is true that if you act confident, you will become confident. So if you're not sure of what you're doing, but you force yourself to do certain things with your hands or with your voice, you will follow that. You will become more confident yourself. So a simple change in posture um, does give a huge difference. Now, what you can do, you can, if it helps, you can imagine the other people as countries, not as people. Um, concentrate on which names you need to talk to, which countries you need to sign on your piece of paper that you have in your hand. Um, if it's easier for you to form human friendships first, then do that. Get to know people. I mean, personally, I think of people as countries. I still don't know their names. Um, so, yeah, that's what I do. You do whatever works for you. Another thing you can do is mimicking people you admire or people who you want to follow. So you can look around. You can see what the power delegates are doing. And you can just try and mimic, for example, their tone of voice or their lobbying strategy. We learn by copying, and and you can do that without fully understanding why you're doing it. You'll see for yourself when you do it. You'll see what other people are doing. You try and just try. Do what they're doing without fully understanding, without knowing why. And then you'll see why, because you'll see the results. So if someone is making a group of the countries that are like them. You can make a group of countries that are like you. You can talk to them and you'll see the results. Another aspect is dressing the part. It's more important to wear clothes that make you feel comfortable and confident than it is to stick to the dress code. I mean, of course, keep it formal, but if someone is pressuring you into wearing something that you're not confident in, that you're not comfortable in, you've lost your concentration for the day. So 